All right, Ken. So another great superpower of OpenZD is the ability to have direct addressability. What does that mean? Well, uh, if you are really, really lucky and you have a load balancer that knows how to forward the incoming IP address, well, you can you can get information at your server about who's trying to connect to you, right? So in the past, as a developer, if I wanted to connect to my application, I'm going to most most likely I'm going to use some sort of DNS name, and I'll have registered it somewhere. Um, it'll be available, and that DNS name is going to map to an IP address, and I'm going to send my traffic over layer three or layer four, or whatever, and um, it's going to reach my application. And when it reaches my application, so that's how I addressed my my information to my application using DNS or an IP address. And when it gets to that application, I'm I'm if I'm lucky, I'm going to have a load balancer, like I said, that forwards the incoming IP address. And I can see, I can get a little bit of information about who is trying to connect to my service before I've authenticated them. Now, if I'm unlucky, my load balancer will not forward the incoming IP address. There's a, a header that gets added on in HTTP. Uh, it's X forward four, I think is what it's called, that, that does this sort of work. And if I'm, if I'm lucky, I get it. If I'm unlucky, I don't get it. And if I'm really unlucky, then I have users who access my services through some global VPN or from the corporate network or from wherever. And then every user looks like the same user and I can't make any inferences there at all. And so, you know, being able to make any kind of determination about who is attaching and, and uh, coming into my service is absolutely impossible. In fact, so impossible, you generally yeah. can't do it. Um, yeah, in terms and, of like asymmetric warfare, it's just not in your favor because you're very exposed. Not. Well, every time you go you through something that nets, you, you, you know, you, you lose any ability to, to figure out who it is who's, ta who's attaching to you ahead of time. Right now, exactly. contrast that, contrast that with open ZD with open ZD, strong network, uh, strong zero trust, um, principles authorized before connect strong identity. You a hundred percent know who's knocking on your door before you're allowed. You even let them at the door before you even, uh, let them into the, into the house or whatever, you know, I'm bad analogy I'm trying to do the whole authorized before connect um, uh, motif. But with OpenZD, you know the strong identity that's trying to connect. So that strong identity is able to be identified. This is from Clint. And then Clint in that application that's trying to dial, in this case, we're using Jenkins as our example. Clint is able to say, I just want to dial Jenkins. I don't care where Jenkins is in the world. You can pick Jenkins up and move them if you want to move them. You can get a new IP address. Layer three, layer four melt away in an open ZD world, and you get this wonderful addressability capability for free with open ZD. Does that make that you uh, about physical versus logical? Like with when you're using when you when your ability to to talk to something is based on your IP address or the zone that you're in. There's a there's at least a loose coupling there to your physical circuit, your location. You know, like this is a logical abstraction that is software defined and it'll, it flattens the network. So the only thing yeah. that keeps you from talking to something is whether your identity has permission and it's a strong identity, not some weak identity trust factor, like you're in the building or you're on the VPN in the user network, or you've got some IP address that happens to have a, an exception in the firewall. So it, it creates a much more flexible and logically defined flat network where we can start thinking about everything as a potential peer if it's allowed to talk to each other rather than only client and server where servers are normally visible and clients are not. And, you know, in this conversation, I think of a new superpower, one that I want to add onto my slide deck, which is about reach. Because you had talked about the basically the overlay versus the underlay. <clears throat> and, you know, we talk about multi-cloud a lot at NetFoundry and, and OpenCD and how easy OpenCD makes multi-cloud, makes private cloud to private cloud, right? It, it makes all of that just incredibly trivial. So that's actually a, a secondary superpower. I don't have a slide deck for, but I'm going to put a slide yeah. in for reach because it, 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 I, I have glossed over reach for a year. 
even though that's such an amazing superpower of ZDC. Hey, like reachability, right? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Host, yeah post something on your phone if you want to. It, uh, it, I mean, it literally. Some limitations, yeah. But are there? I don't know. How, like, yeah, it, it's, maybe, it's literally. Maybe liveness, but liveness or bandwidth, the, but no. there's well, well, a that's, significant I mean, amount of compute and bandwidth available, yeah. For sure. And that reach is, is an absolute superpower. So, you know, you want to fire up a Docker container in your local, in, at your house and, and give me access, we can do that. You want to fire up Kubernetes in some cluster and give me access, you can do that. You want to fire up uh, a, 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 your own for, private server somewhere and give me access, you could, do, it, it literally doesn't matter. All you need is outbound internet and uh right. you'll you're able to address whatever you're trying to address super, yeah, say outbound, super cool. but the result of that is that the thing that's doing the outbound connection is like tethered onto this overlay so it is addressable it is reachable by its peers if they have permission even though it's underlay it's like physical access is outbound i might i might start saying all you need is outbound internet connectivity on the underlay or somehow put underlay in there because I, my brain just implies overlay so yeah the overlay has right. that reach the underlay you need outbound underlay access and then you then you can have bi-directional overlay access exactly so, yeah cool 